So hello everyone, my name is Pat. I'm a PhD student at the MIT Media Lab and this is the Middle West seminar series. And today we have an amazing uh, guest, um, Professor Katia Wega, who's you know an amazing researcher and a dear friend of mine. Um, she's currently an assist assistant professor of the Department of Design at University of California, Davis, where she found and directed the Interactive Organism Lab. She was also a postdoc um, as, uh, at the MIT Media Lab, where I'm at right now. Um, she published at top tier computer science conferences and journal, including CHI, TEI, DIS, IUI, and IEEE. Um, her work has also been you know, featured extensively in you know, BBC News, uh, uh, New Scientist Wired, Discovery CNN, and was awarded by South by Southwest, Ars Electronica, and many more. She also pioneered the work on beauty technology and you know, seamless interface between human and, and wearable technology. So without further ado, the one and only uh, Professor Katia Wega. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pat, Lina, and Catherine, for organizing this series. It's very exciting for me to be with you guys. And let me share my screen. And yeah, let me know any times if you can see it correctly. And you can hear me. Okay. I will also open the chat next to me, so if you have any questions, you can just communicate. Uh, yeah, so I will be talking today uh, about different projects that involve the skin, the body, and body fluids. But first, I have a question for you guys. So if I ask you, and maybe you could help me answering this question, uh replying on the chat was that a skin the skin functionality when you see your skin what was the meaning for you do you have any ideas you can open the mic or maybe right yep. protecting us from like diseases for sure yeah that's that's a great answer so if you could have these two meters of square of the skin that this protecting is kind of like a filter that doesn't allow some, even like some molecules to go through our body. So it's protecting, we have this protection layer. That's awesome. The cell also mentioned protection. Uh, what other functionality? Someone else has any other idea? Sensing. Sensing, that's fantastic. So when you touch something, you could know if it's something very hot, cold, you could know textures of things. It allows us itself to understand our environment. That's fantastic. Thank you. Any other ideas how other functionalities that we are giving to our skin? What about uh, when your skin, for example, change its color or even change its shape. So you, for example, you get red for some physiological rules or physical reaction. Your skin is communicating with you and letting you know what's, what's going on with your body. And this cell also mentioned appearance. And that's also fantastic. So if you think about your skin, if we could change different uh, appearance of, of actually our skin, it's a way that allows us to represent and express ourselves. Uh, we use makeup, we use tattoos, we use piercing, we modify the skin itself, uh, we use uh, plastic surgery too. So our skin is also in constant modification in a way that will allow us to express uh, in the, the, the way that we want. And Bailey also mentioned it can record things, cars and such, or tattoos. Yes, exactly. So there is also technique, now that we talk about scars and tattoos, the skull scarification, that uh, is usually very much more common probably in Africa, that you could also create designs or creating scars. 
uh, but also a scar also could remind you of something that happened to you when you were a child, for example. So yeah, our skin have all these amazing functionality itself. And going back to uh, what the cell mentioned about the appearance of our skin, uh, we think about makeup itself. It's one way that we modify our skin. It didn't change very much over the time. So if I wearing a lipstick right now, my mom wears a lipstick, my grandma wears a lipstick. So in, in some way, the way we enhance or hide some attributes of or features of our body uh, could be done by makeup, but it didn't change too much over the time. So now I will be showing to you in some projects that I was using this concept that was I created in 2012, that is the concept of beauty technology. It's how we could use different cosmetics and hide electronics in a way to keep our appearance in the way that we want it, but allows us to interact with different devices. And the first project I will show to you is this conductive makeup. And the very first idea was like, could we interact or active uh, different devices with just blinking or winking? And for that, we use uh, electro, we use chemical, uh, we use a chemical process for metallized eyelashes. And we put one eyelash up, one eyelash down, and just by blinking, we could create different patterns. Let me show you just one video oh, for that. Let me show you just one video that showcases that. Oh, that is too loud. Up <laughs> So you can see over here how just by blinking, in this case it's an art project, but we were showing how different light patterns were activated with the models blinking. And in that way, we were thinking not just in making that makeup as seamless as possible, but also the interaction itself. In this case, it was in this conference TI, it's a student competition that I was a superhero. It's my free time as a superhero, I have a superpower of levitating objects. And just by blinking, is making the drone to fly. And uh, there are different complications also when we use like unconscious behaviors like blinking, isn't it? Because we blink all the time. And Every time we close our eyes, it's like 150 milliseconds uh, that we are doing that super fast for activating devices. So we're using time for thinking not in voluntary movement, but voluntary movements. And this, this project was uh, when I was already a postdoc at Committee in the Lab, as Pat mentioned, with Cindy Kawa and Shamoha. And we tried to think, and this came after um, an interview that uh, some journalists asked, like, how many, how many makeup do you think we will have? And I hope we will have just one. And we will actually activate it and change it depending on what we need. So we created, just as a proof of concept, this project called Promo Scheme. That is an eyeshadow made with thermochrome inks that it could be changing its color and displaying, uh, in this case, changing the color of the makeup itself.
and our skin or well our body it also involves the hair and the hair itself is fascinating because uh, we will change different hairstyles we change its color it's also public in some way because you guys can see my hair but it's also private because it's, it's part of my body uh, but also it's kind of like an interesting tool we go to our hair when we're thinking so much about something or when we're nervous or we kind of like even like a flirting device you put your hair to mimic like a, a child when you are talking with someone and all these are different unconscious out of contact behaviors that we do so the question we have is like we could use these behaviors that consciously to interact with our devices. So we created this product called Hairwear that are chemically metabolized hair extensions, very similar process with the eyelashes. And we connect that to a microcontroller. So we will use that as an input device. So in that way, you could see over here, you can see over here, uh, we have the different hair extensions and each of them, it, it works like a capacity sensor. So we touch the hair and we can send a message, in this case, to the phone. It's connected by Bluetooth. And with that, we can also think about different applications. You can touch your hair and seamlessly, you can send a message that it was predefined because everyone noticed. It's kind of remind us this kind of like James Bond, so kind of recording a conversation probably. We also discuss about what, to, what are the implications of privacy too in these kind of devices. And as well, if you are in danger, you don't want to take out your phone to send a message with the location, but People just don't appear when you're in a risky situation and send a message. Um, of course, they can sell it for the new uh, And all this it was a way to think about a combination of having the device to go seamless. It, it looks like my hair. Even like the chemicals I was using, it was to have like a color very similar to my hair color, kind of like more brown. And since you're using uh, copper and silver to metallize it, but then I'm using nickel, a black, a black nickel to make it darker. So with those materials, we will have these extensions. It looks like a, a hair extension that was also part of the experiments. How we make it to look like an actual hair extension so it feels like that. Our body is also our fingernails. And in this project, we were putting RFIDs into each fingernail. So in this case, for example, each fingernail could be a different uh, musical note. And one thing I really like about these kind of devices, I was thinking more about this right now in these years about coffee, that you don't need to touch something. It's kind of like something that you play on the air and you just kind of approximate it. When, for example, when you play the metro, you don't need to even take out your car from your, from your wallet, you just go closer. Something very similar to that. And other things we were doing, other kind of uh, exhibitions with musicians. And as we don't need to put anything around it, we could also think about other materials that will be instead of air. And we create all, also this project called Aqua DJ, that is a DJ controller into the water. So when the DJ put the fingers into the water, different sound uh, tracks will be activated.
like oh, I was even trying to follow like the startups that are using this similar technologies for paying the metro uh, in different cities like London, Japan, and China. And one project that I I think it was kind of very uh, probably close to my heart because it was so I was even co collaborating with uh, with Felipe. Felipe was uh, five uh, times or six times World Championship in Jiu Jitsu, and unfortunately during a training he lose mobility. And he came to me after the superhero project and he said, you know, like I would like to have independence. Uh, sometimes there are very simple things for you guys that I cannot do because I cannot move on my body, like even changing the channels of the TV. And uh, I would like to be a superhero. I would like to see like linking, changing the channels of the TV. And of course, uh, we were not thinking adding makeup or using makeup with him. So we create this other interface called effects in makeup. In makeup are, uh, uh, if effects makeup are the makeup that usually is used for Hollywood to make a big nose or scars. And we create kind of like a second screen. And we could think about the muscles of our face. We have around 45 different facial muscles and moves independent, independently, but also together. So, Cool. Your skin could be that interface, and we create this project called Winky Mode. A way to use uh, just his blinking to turn on the TV. Um, this was the first time after 30 years that Felipe was turning on the TV. So I want to share this picture. And Felipe was very inspiring for us, and. Um, well, I did mention my background, I work on computer science, but I also combined uh, different art projects. And we created this art project called Casey, that in a way that showcased how just by really smiling, winking, or raising eyebrow, or closing the lips, so your facial movements could be allowing you to interact with devices. And what's fascinating for me uh, with this last technology is the use, of course, of the facial movements, but thinking about what are these, again, going back to these unconscious behaviors and how we could use these conscious behaviors and use makeup itself to create seamless devices that not just the electronic consumption, but also the interaction. And in this case, we, uh, we create this project with my, the members of my lab, Tal Gemini, that are these special jewels that usually are used in festivals, but just by throwing the eyebrows, we could also create these communication devices. In this case, we even communicating with Alexa and other devices to ask for information, also asking for help. So thinking about makeup itself and how we call incorporate both aspects was kind of very uh, motivated for our lab more recently. You can see over here how by throwing like it's just like a switch and 
those layers are connected. And we just you said that MLS way why are the proteins also hiding in between the the jewels? Uh, before interact and in this case we will be we were using some tricks and connecting to Alexa. And over our project we created and this was a uh, very collaboration with Syndical uh, Lab. We were thinking about we're a similar way to create micro gestures, but now combining with artificial intelligence, uh, we use this uh, double eyelid sticker. So these eyelid stickers usually are, are created, they are used for creating a crease on the eyelid. Uh, so it's kind of also another uh, makeup product. Uh, so when we use that, and what was interesting for us is also the interaction that we have when we blink, because when we are not blinking, as this is a composite sensor, it's not making a connection. So when you're closing your eyes, you're not making a connection. So it's not like the capacity is not that strong as when you open your eyes and you're making a, a pressure on the eyelid. So in that way, uh, it's loosened to this project from uh, Luo and create this direct contact with that crease and increase and decrease the pressure of that eyelid. Eyelid stickers are clear adhesive strips applied above the lash line to temporarily create a crease for the effect of an enlarged eye. The direct contact and the proximity of the sticker to the eye crease makes it an ideal substrate to sense blinking. Is Lucent is a semi-transparent on-skin sensor device which uses eyelid stickers coated with a conductive liquid to detect blinking. The sensor detects when the eyes are closed and open. Key features consist Move forward, forward. There are a few more projects I want to share. Uh, so all these projects into this technology have like specific minions that are important that work in the way that we're contributing with uh, human computer interaction. The first one is to transform traditional cosmetics to interactive ones, to have our skin as an interactive platform. Other one is how we could have these wearables that are unnoticeable. And with that, we are thinking about having not just the electronics that are camouflaged or not visible, but also the interactions itself, the way we interact. So usually when you interact with your phone or when you interact with your smartwatch, it's very obvious that you are doing that. So how we make those interactions conceal? Also thinking about how this could be a new field into wearable computing. And actually I'm super happy that now even like in Kai or other conference, there are new explorations of these human device and uses of this beautiful technology. And more lately, I was also interested not just in thinking about these interactive objects, but thinking more in ourselves as an interactive organism. And for that, uh, we were exploring, and this was part of. Uh, of uh, my project when I was a postdoc at MIT, uh, of how the skin could be a display. And for that, we created these tattoos, but instead of using traditional inks, we were using biosensors. A biosensors that react with interstitial fluids, the fluids that are you know, inside of our skin, so they could change color depending on our metabolism. So you could think about, for example, someone with diabetes, the people's levels change, and the color of the tattoo is not static anymore. It could be dynamically changing. We use two different kinds of sensors mainly. One that changes in terms of the fluorescence, like this sodium and pH, and other ones that change the color of it, like this glucose or the pH also. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, this was uh, just a proof of concept. So unfortunately, I cannot make the device with the two today. But it was a way that we could continuously monitoring and showing. And now I, I can see, and we were even collaborating with Imperial College uh, to create other kind of software to improve that and create other ways to read that information. So there are new uh, projects coming out, not just from my lab, but also other labs. And that, that was very important for us when we started this project to highlight that as a new possibility for tattoos. And, and now I kind of more interesting as I mentioned, of, um, and I think that uh, Bailey was mentioning of tattoos itself, but also in terms of fluids from our body. So we think about the fluids that we have in the interstitial fluids, but saliva is also a different vehicle of information. And we create these ligatures that they also change color, but it responds of all on the saliva. So they are always continuously sensing and changing its color. So this was a simulation to share how the project was working. We create these ligatures and we collect those, those colors and it will be sent to this app, and depending on the color, we will identify the type of biosensor, the value of, of itself. So you could think about these, uh, you know, like usually these ligatures that come in different colors, the mainly kids use it, but now what if they, they are changing its color and, and giving us more information? Uh, we use pH, uric acid, and nitric oxide. And there are different ways that we could control, for example, different patients with bulimic or different dental, dental uh, issues or healthy issues that you will be having. This is a little bit of the process we did for creating the ligatures and the biosensors we were using. And uh, yeah, for me right now, what we're trying to do in the lab is to move forward in ways that we could think about body modification techniques itself. And because of course, very similar to the, to the beauty products and the beauty technology. So we didn't create makeup, we didn't create tattoos. We are just using these different ways that we modify the body. Um, asking the question, what if we integrate uh, different technologies? Right now, we are using, uh, we're exploring other kind of biosensors instead of using the ones that change its color. We're exploring more electrochemical biosensors. So it could be, for example, sampling your sweat, and your sweat could be telling you information. And that for us is very important because we, in different cases, we need to control and monitor our body. And the only way to do that is you have to go to the doctor and get that information. And also my other student, Shuji, is working with animals and also having this way to sense the fluids from uh, animals' urines and saliva. So yeah, so this is different ways that we could think about the skin as interactive display. So we could have information that we usually don't have access to. Uh, we use technology that we call it is indistinguishable from the human body because you cannot uh, imagine that that tattoo, for example, is changing its color. And also instead of having a bottle or even blinking as an input, we could think about the metabolism itself as another input that has other kinds of challenges or implications. Like for example, how fast or slow our metabolism is changing and different kinds of issues that you will be having uh, inside of your body. And also the use of these body modification techniques as a use of creating a platform for incorporating technology. But yeah, so I want to also thank labs member. Uh, if you want to also check more information, you can go to our website. And once again, thank you so much to the organizers of MetaWare and uh, welcome to any questions that you may have.
Thank you so much, Katia. It's really wonderful to see all different thread of your work kind of coming together. We have uh, several uh, people in the audience now, and I would love to welcome everyone who have questions to unmute and ask the question or type in the chat. Yeah, so I guess I can start with my, I have several questions for you, but um, the first one is that, um, you know, with, with the different world that you talk about, are there any body parts that you haven't sort of explored as the input of the interface? You look at the hair, you know, the eyelid, you know, the skin, different part of the body. Are there any part that you still haven't worked on? Yeah. Yeah, so right now we are interested on sweat as a body fluid. So we're mm -hmm. still thinking about on a skin interfaces. So it could be actually use the different uh, materials or the different uh, makeup products that we were using. For example, no. you could think about the lipstick that we were we were exploring right. that mainly for creating an interaction, but not for sensing, for example, what you're drinking, the environment right. or your saliva. Uh, yeah. But also sweat is something that is also interesting right. for us. Uh, so now that we are moving into that area, there are different other factors that we need to consider. For example, with sweat, we need to think about the body itself and kind of like that body heat map and where do you mm -hmm. sweat more because from person to person right. it change. Uh, so there are like, it's kind of like a totally different interesting world, but it in some way kind of like overlaps uh, with yeah. the use of uh, beauty products and the use of- Very cool. Um, in interacting with body fluids that I'm surprised uh, that now that I were doing more research that there are like different body fluids that we probably, I, at least for myself, I did, I did, I wasn't aware, you know, like for mm -hmm. example, from our mouth, uh, yeah. in between the glands of our teeth is a different body fluid than the saliva. So exactly. uh, like that, our inside of our ears, so we also have serum that could be also more a possibility. So yeah, I think that it's right. a whole different exploration too. And your lab is called Interactive Organism, right? So I think that's yes. really fascinating that it's not just about human also. I think that was really fascinating, um, very visionary. Yes, uh, and recently we were, um, I didn't have the time to add uh, the other projects because um, Ellie Lazaro uh, was a student in the lab that she was working with other kind of organisms that were fungus. So she was creating mm -hmm. materials for creating wearables or other devices for replacing plastic or PLA that, for example, we use when we treat mm -hmm. something. Uh, so how we could create compostable materials. Or uh, my other student, Shelly San, she's now very interested in animal computer interaction. So we're also mm -hmm. uh, working more on, uh, on also this uh, new world for me, at least that is our animal. So I think organisms right. will have like a huge expansion since bacteria to uh, beyond humans. So yes. Mm -hmm. Wow, wonderful. Very, very mm -hmm. cool. Any question for Katia? Hello, I have a question. Um, oh, hello, happen? Katia. I really enjoyed um, your talk. I really liked uh, look, like thinking about how tattoos could be used to detect different things within people. And that made me think, um, do you think that there's still a long way to go before technology um, like all, everything you presented today is more accessible to the public? Yes, uh, for example, the project of the tattoos, and uh, I try always to mention that it's, it takes so long for, uh, for having available for the project. Uh, we were surprised as authors of the paper of like the need that this project uh, came up because we had hundreds of emails of people that has, for example, diabetes and, and even talking with some father that his daughter is two years old 
and thinking that, you know, like she's not communicating with me. I don't need to know what's going on with her body or someone that probably is not a traditional tattoo user, someone that is more elderly, but he mentioned that he was being for 40 years pinching himself every day to know her their glucose levels. Um, but of course, for us, it was a very first stage and we just use that as a proof of concept. And right now there are other labs that are moving it a little more forward, uh, but still we are in this inception aspect because uh, usually in these projects, after you do this part of the proof of concept, you will be moving into testing into living cells. Uh, to know like this biocompatibility with it cells itself with living organisms. And then after that, we probably will work with animals or in a parallel or other parallel alternative that exists. And after that, you probably will go to clinical trials. So it's a still a long path to go. Uh, but uh, yeah, my lab right now, we are not focusing exactly in the tattoos, uh, but I am very glad to see that there are other labs that currently are moving into that, those directions and thinking about how we will have those tattoos. So some labs, like I mentioned, are from the University of Colorado, are taking the tattoos even with UVE that even they are already even implanted. Uh, um, I forgot right now, sorry, that the professor. Another one is in Imperial College, my colleague or uh, Ali Edison, that he's continuously working uh, in these projects uh, currently. So let's see, let's see what the future comes, comes up for the tattoos. Fantastic. Thank you, Sam. Any other question? I have a question. Katya, I was wondering, what are your thoughts on sustainability look like using our skin, which is self? repaired a uh, self-economic in the way i think it's nothing to be wasted what are your thoughts on using our skin and sustainability for the future projects for prosthetics for different applications for health monitoring do you have any thoughts on that yeah that's a great question and we were in the lab also working very hard for sustainable materials itself, uh, not exactly about electronics and energy, but I think that it's another huge world that we need to work farther. But uh, one of the questions we even had was, you know, like all these products that we are creating is basically one use or supposed to be just one use, you know, like uh, uh, the makeup that you're putting uh, in and out, uh, you cannot reuse way too many times, like for example, I don't know, a belt or, or, or a, a smartphone. Uh, so that's why uh, my student Ellie was interested in using mycelium. And first to think about wearable technology, so she created a mycelium skin that kind of looks, uh, feels a little bit more like leather. And in that way, it will be, uh, use it as a way to create wearable technologies because even in our lab we create a lot even like i have one over here we have like all these uh you know all these cases that we put it after we went to the conference we put it in in a drawer or somewhere else but they're still there and we are not reusing it so we're we're thinking instead of having like that, we could still reuse electronics, but the PLA or other materials that we use for creating it, we, what if we put just in our backyards and they can post. Uh, other thing I wanna say, and that's something that we are still on the way of publishing, so probably I'm gonna talk a little more about that, but uh, we are creating a tool that 
will support creators that use digital fabrication to understand how much uh, they are consuming because it's not just about how many iterations they did for creating this case and how much material and that it's just over there and it doesn't degrade, but it's also from when you buy a product, for example, we are in California and we buy some PLA that probably came from China. Uh, is it coming by plane? Is it coming by a ship? Uh, that in involves a lot also in the consumption that we will have. Uh, also the use of the machines for creating that material itself. There are some companies or manufacturers that they have like more energy efficient uh, products in their fabrication, but also the product itself in the end of life. So we are creating all these recommendations for digital fabrication. So we will, uh, we will share that because it's kind of like a, a very common problem that we will see in, and I guess your lab, any of our labs. Great, thank you so much. I also know that you just recently published a book where we can find your book so we can purchase it. Congratulations. Oh, yes. Also. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I have the book that is uh, Beauty Technology Design and Seamless Wearable Computing. Uh, real computers and it's in Springer. I, I will find a link and put it that uh, on the chat so you guys will take a look. And I think it's, it's by Springer, so it might be available for, for most of the universities. So yes, uh, one of the things that is also important for us as researchers, as you might also know, is that how to share information, how to make it available and other people could reuse as well. Also was sharing even, oh, thank you, but for sharing it. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, how other people could reuse those ideas also, not just by the way it, it exists as a, as a book, but everything. So yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's very important for us to, to share and let me know if you create more beauty, beauty technology products. I would love to hear it. That will be amazing. I don't know if there are other questions, but what courses are you teaching? I'm very curious to know. Yes. Uh, so I'm in the department of design. Uh, I think I mentioned that very briefly to Pat in the beginning. Um, and I teach coding for designer, very classic, uh, but also wearable technologies. So I, I'm teaching the class right now, actually, this is quarter and teaching and also another class called interactive objects. So we are, we are combining different sensors and motors in that class in wearable technologies. We go from speculative design to also uh, product design. So it's, a, it's, a, it's very interesting and, a, and every day I kind of get very impressed with ideas. I think that that's kind of like the most uh, thing that I, I learned after being a faculty is and probably you also know, Galina, that uh, how the students are super creative and always surprising. I know I have some of the students participating like Bailey, and also Abik was helping for the class. I learned so much from them too. It's fascinating to be among young people. Right, any other question? I think we probably have time for one last question if anyone want to take that. Just All right. Say then, hi to everyone that is around. I could see some familiar names like Queen, Amy, Margarita. Very nice to see you guys around, and it was a pleasure to be with, with you guys today. We also have a uh, you know media lab legend Chris Mann also here, which is really cool. Yes. Uh, and we collaborate a lot, that, so it's always on my heart, Chris. <laughs> So um, I guess if there's no other question, then Galina, do you want to talk more about the seminar series and then close this session? 
absolutely we are recording all the talks for the people that miss the beginning of the talk we will have website we will share all the archives and for this month we have two other exciting speakers and then in june we will have two main conversational platforms where we'll have debates and talks and that will be the end of our series but thank you so much katya this was so inspiring and so glad that you accepted our invitation thank you so much thank you so much to you guys it's a pleasure thank for me you. to be here